Pink Friday, darling, 10th anniversary. I'm just, I'm happy. I'm very happy that, um, <laughs> not you getting emotional. <laughs> not you getting emotional. No, but no, uh, Pink Friday, it, it's it been 10 years. She came up with that album in 2010. Girl. Please silence all cell phones. Put all cell phones and babies on vibrate, please. First of all, don't do me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but for real, Nicki Minaj, like, it's... You see everybody was putting on their wigs and stuff like that. They had, like, little wigs or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was so cute. Like, I was like, oh, my God. I didn't, I didn't even notice it was, the tenth, it was the 10th year, but, yeah, we're in 2020. Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the best is your favorite? This is oh I like this song about um Nicki Minaj. We're talking about opening up albums and um That's what I'm saying. The opening of that album, it was just I'm the best. <laughs> I love it. Turn off when we get copyrighted. She said what they gonna say. What they gonna say. Okay. They gonna say I'm and the then best she followed it up doing it. with Roma's Revenge. But but you know what? Ten years later still like Nicki Minaj is still the best bitch doing it. And the fact that she really like mm-hmm. spoke that over herself. And has and it hasn't changed. And it has in not 10 changed. Years. I love that for her. This woman can tell time, honey. Yeah. She, she she can tell the future. So Pink Friday um still holds the record as the highest selling debut um by any female rapper. And uh, this week it re entered the US iTunes chart. It peaked at number one oh, people on listening. both the rap uh the rap and R and B albums as well. Oh, the bars was album acting an ass. Honey. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they started um it started the celebrations on uh on Twitter on Wednesday. And I think you changed, well, you changed your Abby too. You put a wig on yours. I put a wig, yeah. Right. But everybody started putting w- pink wigs on the Abbeys. And then on pink Thursday wig, night, pink, eh. um, uh. Thursday night, it was revealed or it was announced that the uh, Nicki Minaj, Pink Friday, Pink Friday anniversary, Pink Friday 10, and Barb's hashtags uh, now have a pink wig emoji yeah. uh, next to them. So if you're going to tweet about the anniversary, and I tweeted to that. Nicki, hope she was going to respond. But, you know, it, man, you people. That. I don't know. Mad people was mad people was responding, but I did put that, you know, you know, this album really it came out through a real tumultuous time in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, it was when I was in seventh grade and that was like my worst year in grade school where I felt like the entire class was against me and I felt like my family at some point was against me. This is before I even came out too. Mm-hmm. Honey. Um and I would listen to Roman's Revenge and I would listen to the the songs that was on Pink Friday and it would uplift me. And to a way that I was like, you know what, you can stick up for yourself and you can, and, and, and at the end of the day, none of this, none of this matters. Like be you period. You get what I'm saying? And that's why when people say, oh my God, why you defend Nikki? Like she's paying you. I don't know. This is the reason. This is the reason her music is therapeutic for maybe not for you, but to me, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? Right. It's very, it was very therapeutic and I loved listening to it. And I'm still like, child, I was listening to the whole album last night. I was like, oh my God, I, child, I remind me of back in the day. Right. Like, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. And that's, and I think that's generally why a lot of people listen to Nikki because it's just like, when we think about Roman's Revenge, that was her response mm-hmm. to everything. Yeah. Miss Go Off. Um, Go Off. <laughs> <laughs> But we all have those people in your Ooh. life that 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 try to bring you down and try to say that that you know whatever they say, mm-hmm. and and you you got to stand up for yourself and and look like look this this is this is who I am. Mm-hmm. You go over there. <laughs> I think um, so. When this album came out, I was uh, about to was I graduating from college. Oh wow! Um, it was like because it came out in two thousand ten. Actually, mm-hmm. I'd already graduated. I, oh no, the the singles had already like. She'd already dropped like your love mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, because this this actually dropped when I was literally I had literally just made it back home mm-hmm. from LA from Hollywood. That was the year I graduated from college. And um I had already kind of liked Nikki's style. I had heard her like she was like a YouTube chick then. Yeah. I didn't really have to wait. like she was that girl that had space. The, yeah, she was the girl that had that song with Beyonce. She remixed um um, single ladies. Yeah, she be, yeah she remixed the single mm-hmm. ladies. She also did like uh, doom, doom. yeah. So I remembered her. Yeah, I had I had that on my phone. So I I had already you know 
had decided that oh, I like Nicki Minaj. She's mm-hmm. funny. She makes rap fun. Right. And like my favorite rappers uh, are Slick Rick and E Forty and like rappers who have personality and they can tell great stories. And mm-hmm. uh, and Nicki just happened to be a girl that could do that and make me enjoy it. Like yeah. I was never, uh, I was never a fan of like Lil Kim or like Foxy in that way. Like I know maybe two of their songs, but I love Missy Elliott. Mm-hmm. But Nicki made me enjoy rap. And, um, yeah. you know, as a, as an artist and as a, as a singer and a songwriter, it's like she, because I'm so naturally goofy, like play with words, like she really inspired me to like, Hmm, let me tell my story. Let me see if I can if play around with that. And right. so, um, that album came out and I think it was, it was like two years later when I was moving to, when I moved to New York, when I moved here in, in October, um, went through this period where, um, I was literally homeless. Like we were literally sleeping in a car and I was washing up in Starbucks restroom. We were changing clothes in like hotel lobby bathrooms and shit, Mm -hmm. like skipping meals and just trying to like figure out how to get into certain events. Like maybe we just need to go here. We can meet somebody and then we can, you know, just trying to piece the shit together. Right. And I would either, I would listen to fly every night. Well, uh, her and Rihanna. Um, if I couldn't listen to it, if my phone was there, I would I would just recite the words to myself, like play it in my head, like mm-hmm. to remind myself why I came here. Like I came here to win. Like I'm gonna thrive here. Like I'm not gonna go home. And I got I wasn't. I was determined to not let it end up like it was in L. A. Like yeah. I feel. I feel like I literally ran away from Hollywood because it was too much for me. And I feel like I wasn't ready, but. My attitude when I came to New York was like, bitch, the first thing I bought when I got here, I went to Walmart. I got the plane. I went to meet my friend at his job. We went to Walmart. The first thing I bought was a sleeping bag. He was like, why are you going to sleeping bag? I was like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with, with Madonna's story, but if I go homeless here, if I have to sleep on the streets mm-hmm. before I get my big break, before someone signs me as a model, before I get my acting role or someone likes my music or whatever, I want to make sure that I have what I need. Right. And I kept that mentality and I meant it. New York is cold. Right. But I, but, but I was dead ass. Mm -hmm. And I I remember, I remember her music being something that, that kept me motivated to to stay with it, like to stay with it. And, so I will forever be a Nicki Minaj fan. Oh yeah. Today, I mean, this whole week has been like a really interesting celebration. And uh, today, she announced on social media that her long-awaited documentary uh, will be coming to HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the barbs are standing back and standing by for the official premiere date. Um, but we're excited yep. to hear it. Um, so congratulations to Nicki Minaj. Congratulations to the barbs. Today's mm-hmm. day. Um, you know, and also I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that this story can kind of came. At the same time that Meg's debut album came because that was also a moment for, for hip hop too, just seeing yeah. them being able to work together when Meg was a uh, artist that was coming up and her being a self professed Barb, like and giving Nikki her roses and the respect mm-hmm. and stuff that she deserves and to yeah. know that they get to sh- they get to celebrate this week together. A lot of people from the other side, a mm-hmm. lot of birds, uh, were chirping on Twitter about what they saying? about oh, you didn't see? About how, you know, Nikki. Oh, that's not what I think it is. Mm-hmm, about why would she celebrate her 10th anniversary on the same, on the same day, day as Meg's. that Meg's album's coming out? She's being a hater. She's trying to blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you know where camp that came from. Yeah, the party gang girl. But, um, but people with, with same brains is like, wait a minute. Well, how do y'all know that Meg didn't want to drop her album this weekend because of her, the impact that Pink Friday had on her? And not even just that, and, but it's like Nikki didn't put out music, so it's not like it's going to affect. Anything, right? It's just Meg a celebration. Well, you way. know the bars. You know the niggas went straight to the to the stores and rebought the <laughs> album. But um, yeah, you know Nikki bought. It's Nikki got the limited edition. Right, you could buy the album again. I'm like, I because I destroyed mine because I was a little child. <laughs> excuse me, I was a little child when I bought the album. Child, the whole I don't th- I don't even got Pink Friday no more. So I will be buying it again. Buying it again, right? Uh, just but for it's the a, collection. But it's a celebration. Like yeah. it's a celebration for female rap. Yep. That is that it was revived mm-hmm. with this album, and that Meg is the hottest ticket in town right now. Mm-hmm. And um, the message that she has about protecting Black women, I just think that 
b- protecting black women yeah. and believing black women like Nikki this is this is a, this t- time is something that Nikki has been speaking about for years mm. for years so this is a full circle weekend yeah. for female rap and I'm just so I'm just glad to be alive to and see it and I don't it. think it's any hot it's no it's no it was no hottie stand saying nothing like that no nah. Why are y'all the in hybrids. other stand business? You know, the hybrids. They always have <laughs> It don't make any sense. But yeah. So we'll be keeping an eye on HBO Max for this documentary. I, I see know. Nick, Nikki just, oh, oh my God, my bank account, child. Like another streaming platform. It's another streaming platform. But you can get a trial. Just get the trial when they announce that they get the trial. And then just-